right, you guys, welcome back to the Overcomfort Podcast. I am your host, Jenica. It is episode 10 of season two, and I'm so happy that I have my guest, Elsie, as my episode 10. Thank welcome, you. I love you. Yes. She just got here. We were like, let's get this. Let's do this. I'm excited. We've been going back and forth to actually film. We were gonna film. We were gonna do it like three times last week, and it just got <laughs> a little know. crazy. But I'm so so happy that you're here. Um, I've been like keeping up on like TikTok and like YouTube and all this stuff, and I'm like, you know what? I want to know who Elsie is, her story, her life, and where you grew up. So yeah, let's jump in. I want to know who Elsie is. I know some people. You've done podcasts before, right? I did. I've only done one. Alan's. Yeah, Alan's, Alan's yeah. right? Yeah. I'm, I'm not salty about it. Ah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I'm really happy because then I, I like, I got to see it and I'm like, I, I, I now I know more about you, but I kind of want to get deeper into it and your content and OOTD and all that, all that good stuff. So yeah. All right. So tell me, like, who is Elsie? Who was she growing up? I know that your mom was a single mom of four girls, right? And two boys. And two boys. I know. So a, a lot six? of people don't know that, but it's actually six of us. Six? Yeah. Girl. I just don't ever post my brothers on social media. Are they cute? I. They're young. <laughs> oh, damn. Like, how young are we talking? Um, damn, we're not knowing their age. So <laughs> one, of them, one of them is 24. The other okay. one's 23. Oh, so I they're guess they're like, not that young, I'm right? like, I'm 25, so we can I know. I know. Because you're like, really, you're beautiful, so I'm like... I think uh, maybe a boy version like that'd be like cute i still feel like they're like 18 and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah they are cute they're, they're just so private like yeah extremely Aww. that's cute i didn't know that you see my mom yeah. was a single mom of five too oh really so, like that's why i was like oh we need to have a conversation so like i know was how was that life like was it crazy what it was, was growing up for you um it was very challenging of course because it's like we barely got to see my mom my mom was working 24 7 mm -hmm. and we grew up with the babysitter which which was her best friend mm -hmm. um and yeah we like had to take ourselves to school like i actually went to school in the city for like three years here in the valley yeah Where? um i went i don't know if i'm lucky yeah you guys are oh. here. <laughs> um I, swear, I, was, I don't know i went to encino elementary okay yeah but only yeah. went for I, th I think it was three years okay but the whole time we were living in south central so wow. that's pretty much where i'm from like i we grew up in south central like our whole lives wow. and we would take the bus out here <laughs> it was bad and my sisters went to portola and um but you your mom wanted you guys to come out here like yeah here? because over there it was like it was horrible but there was just um, a time where she just, we couldn't do the commute anymore. So yeah. that's when we went back to South Central. And yeah, it was just six of us. So we were, um, we had like social workers. We had our babysitter who helped us. We had, obviously, we, we were fed by the government like to help us. Right. Of course. Yeah, because it was hard because it was just my mom and she would work all day and then like on the weekends like she would go to like pupusas like wow. um so she was hard working yeah she was, was non-stop she was non-stop and we would go with her too on the weekends right it was actually fun <laughs> dude yeah. i f i feel that though because like my mom was non-stop too like mm -hmm. a lot of my childhood she well when i was born that's kind of towards the end is when my little brother she kind of popped off and that's when like her singing career. So I kind of grew mm -hmm. up with my sister right. and, and my older sister and she just became my second mom. And obviously when my mom could, you know, or we would go travel with her on the weekend. So like, I, I, it might be a little too personal of a question, but did you ever feel like you missed her? Like, yeah, like growing up now that you're older, like, mm -hmm. like you kind of like, can you say you have mommy issues a little bit? Um, a little bit, yeah, because I always tend to always like look for my mom. Like I, I always call her, and I'm always just like, I wonder what my mom's doing. Oh, and I'm always checking her location, oh and God. I try to visit her as much as I can because I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I, yeah, I feel like she, she wasn't there for like a lot of our childhood, but mm. but you kind of knew why her, though. Yeah, like, she had a you. Why did you have social workers? Because of my dad. So like my uh, dad. He claimed that um, my mom used to hit us. It was so bad. Like we had like, um, no. we ended up going to like a foster care. No. Yeah. So all, but luckily, like all six of us were put in together, like okay. under the yeah, same Yeah, because it could be. Yeah, it could separate. be. Yeah, it was so scary. Um, and we were just, we were there. I forgot who the lady was who took care of us, but we lived like, in a big ass house. It was me and my, all of my siblings. 
and until like the trial was over like until the actual case was over and then what it was bad yeah so after you still th- talk to your dad no oh. he, he wants no parts i'm like okay bye really yeah. but like you guys stopped talking like after the trial mm-hmm. wow. and then yeah we never um i actually a lot of people <laughs> don't know this but i actually saw him accidentally like when i was like 15 so this happened like our whole trial happened i was like i want to say like six or how old like, are you right now i'm 26 26 okay uh-huh. yeah and i remember my ba- my baby brother he was a newborn oh my so i was like God. five or four i was i just remember i was so young but i remember everything so clearly like clearly uh-huh and my baby brother he was like months like probably one and i had to raise him because the foster parents our foster parents they put us um they put me and my baby brother in the room alone i mean together so i remember i had to raise him for all those months while we wow. were like with my mom but um i accidentally saw my dad because i had a friend in high school and in middle school that apparently like her auntie used to date him or something and then but she had her auntie used to sell tamales uh-huh. so my mom would go buy from her and then <laughs> randomly one day my mom came to the house and i would always be with them like right. all the time and then my mom walked in the house and my mom was because she had went to go get um tamales she had walked in the house and she was she pointed at a guy she was just like oh elsie and then she was just like do you know who that is and i was just like i don't know what you're talking about and she was just like that's your dad like you like blocked the memory <laughs> I was out like, of him i literally did not recognize him and i've been around him like several times because i would always go to the house what? i would always go to my friend's house well it was her aunt's what house. a coincidence so you did you say hi or anything like, I would always just, like, you know, say hi to everyone that was there. Because it was, uh-huh. like, a bunch of senores and senoras. But so. the time you saw him, did you say hi? Or like- no, I know my mom never, like, she never let me go back. She took us out so of there. So she was there, too? My mom, yeah, because she had went to go pick up the malas. <gasps> and, I, and I had no idea, like, it was bad. But afterwards, I, me being, like, an investigator, I went on Google because he also has a record. So, um... I went on Google and I, I searched them up and I was able to get his number, his address and all that. And me and my sister, we did a contact him. <laughs> and he answered. It was so weird because he used to come to Elcita when I was little. All right. And then he was just like, oh, me Elcita. Like, and now I, I remember I was just like, oh, like, is it okay if I call you again? And then like, he was like, yeah. But then he blocked us. No. <laughs> I swear. And we're like, man, fuck you, man. So, Shut up. Okay. So you like, that's crazy yeah no that's crazy you're over here trying to actually fix something when it's not even your fault i know vibes. whatever i mean you're better you're better we're better you know your mom your mom's happy she's happy she's happy yeah. as long as you guys were together because i would be i would be pissed like yeah you put me in foster care for what right you know what i mean yeah uh, so you and your sisters are close in age right yes. who's older like so my my oldest sister is patty and then after her it's betty and then it's my other sister named jenny and then i'm two years apart from jenny and then i'm two years apart from my brother okay so and so then you're like the f- fifth fourth i'm the fourth <gasps> yeah i'm the fourth one too yeah i know you're 25 i'm 25 oh, i yes, turned 26 in october i turned 27 in september look <laughs> at us twins. i know <laughs> <laughs> um so having like a lot of sisters was that like because I, I did an episode one time of like sister comparison. Did you guys ever have that problem? Like comparing yourselves to each other or like obviously sisters fight and stuff. Was that right. especially in like the situation like growing up, you know, in poverty and all that stuff. Like was it difficult your guys' relationship ever? No, I honestly feel like we were more like a like a team mm-hmm. just because we had to help each other. Like we knew that my mom was struggling. So we were like, okay, well That's we have good. to at least clean the house for my mom it was more like we would we would work together it mm-hmm. wasn't more like yeah i i don't think we ever like saw That's each other as though. competition yeah it That's was just more like okay we know we're struggling like i think we're like self-aware that you know it's we only have each other because my mom can't be here right so it was more like yeah i feel like we were more like a team did you up. um are you like the protector no my older sister is yeah oh yeah, yeah. it's like a sister i feel like a yeah. thing well, okay so what would you say like you would be like the baby or I, I feel like i'm the peacemaker really? like and my sisters tell me all the time <laughs> they always tell me that i'm i'm just 
the like the most mature one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you don't want any problems. I don't. I hate it. Like I hate it when my sisters buy. I Aww. I don't like it. Like I always try to put them in the same room without them knowing. No. Yeah. So I I hate that though. Like my mm-hmm. older sister Jackie is the peacemaker too, and she'll be the one to like call meetings or whatever to talk right. about. I'm like I don't want to talk about it yet. Like <laughs> yeah. leave me alone. Like he was mean. Like when we when when, when I'm arguing um with my brother uh that's crazy yeah i didn't know that well i obviously i saw the podcast and i'm like your story is like so inspiring because there's a like there could be a lot of viewers that are in the same situation growing right. up in south central and you're salvi right i am I i'm full salvatorian really? yeah <laughs> sexy i like it <laughs> um but like you were talking about your mom and i related so much because that it's the same situation as my mom. My mom would take right. my sisters to the swap meet and mm-hmm. like sell CDs and like, you know, work their ass off. And, you know, we miss so much of my mom and right. it, I've learned to appreciate her right. like, mm-hmm. for everything that she ever did for us. Is there like a certain experience that you're like, damn, like um, that maybe impacted you way more and you knew like, okay, this has to change. Like, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I think um, so. A lot of stuff would happen to my mom because she would get out of work really late, like around uh-huh. nine, ten ish. And a lot of things would happen to her, like after she would get out of work. Like I remember this one time she had just cashed her check, and it was literally like the only money that we depended on. She got robbed like for it, and it was just bad. Like I remember this other time as well. I don't think I've ever told anyone the story. Um, someone switched her license plate. So oh. and it was a stolen car, like a, like the the, the light, black house. The, the, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, and the helicopters were chasing Shut her. Up. It was so bad. We had no idea. We weren't there with her. She was on her way um to pick us up from our our her best friend's house. Uh huh. And then my mom told us everything, but we we were like so young. So we were like, oh my god, why is this, like why is all this happening to my mom? Like, right. I think. I don't know. I think that just made us realize, like, okay, we, obviously, like, my mom can do it by herself. I, she, she, I mean, she's trying her best, but we don't want to put her life at risk. Or, so all of us, like, even we, we wouldn't even go to high school sometimes. Like, we would skip school to go work, and because we started working at a really young age. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you started LC zero three, right? Oh, oh yeah. Or, or what came before that? So I was I started LC three first. Uh, okay yeah oh, OTD okay yeah, yeah and then after that it was O3 Fash okay yes yeah, so we yeah mm-hmm. so I because w- then you did Fashion Nova yeah so I think Fashion Nova was like my first real like corporate job right mm-hmm. okay so what started Elsie though like where how did you because you started posting just your outfits, neck yeah. down, yeah. right? You always had a thing for fashion? I always Since you were did. little? Mm-hmm. Or, wow. I think, yeah, because I think even be, um, before O3, um, my mom would sell clothes, like, from the car. Mm. So, I don't know. I feel like we've always loved clothes. Just something about, like, clothes mm-hmm. that we just, I don't know, we've always admired. And we loved it, so. So, you just started posting I started posting like layouts. Okay. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, those like layouts. the the purse that right yeah. there. Yeah, right? and we used to get inspired by Forever Twenty One. Right. So we would always see their layouts, and it was so cute. And then that's when I was contacted by the owner of Fashion Nova, mm-hmm. and I was like seventeen at the time. I was so young. And, and it was like an internship, or was it like a paid paid internship? So before I wouldn't get paid in the beginning, but I didn't care because I was like, it was like a Fashion Nova, and Fashion Nova like, was like, yeah, and I was in. their social media, like, um, I was the only person working on their social media. Wow. And then at first it started off with me being there for like an hour, and then it started off with me being there like a couple of days, and then it ended up being a full-time job. Like, I was there five days out of the week. <sighs> and then I think that's what kind of started O today. Like, I pretty much i got so much experience being there right mm-hmm. and it, it like ootd for like people that don't know, no, no, it's like it's your it's your business do you do it with your sisters or? so it's more like a family business okay yeah. i love that love that mm-hmm. do you, does that get complicated yes because i feel like i always see this family business do not mix no. it's hard honey i know <laughs> it's hard. i know about that one mm-hmm. it is very hard And it's like, you don't want to hurt their feelings, but then it's business. Right. So it's like, it's the same thing. Don't mix friends with business. Exactly. And it's like, whatever. Anyways, so you started with your sisters. What was, were you nervous when you guys first launched it? I don't honestly know. I, 
I just feel like we were so young. At least with me, I was like, yeah, I was so young when all this happened. I don't even like, I, I don't know. I felt kind of, I, it doesn't, it didn't really feel like we launched something because we were actually doing something that we really love to do. Right. So it wasn't, and we weren't there. It was, we weren't there for the money mainly. We just loved doing the layouts and it was more like a hobby for us. Mm. But that hobby turned more into a business because we actually saw the, the potential of it. And so like, Go, you saw the potential mm -hmm. right and then you guys started like investing because obviously starting yeah. a business isn't the right financially easiest thing yeah so did you guys save up like equally to like actually do something together like this yeah so i would work at fashion nova and then what really helped us a lot was my sister's ex-boyfriend like her um her son's father Wow. So he would work and then he would kind of pretty much like invest the money for us. Okay. And then that's kind of how it started because obviously yeah, we didn't have the money for it. So when you, when you were doing fashion over, were you still in high school? I you was. Had just graduated? No, I was still in high school. Girl, so you would go after school? I would go after or school. Or would you skip? No, I, so I would skip like my last classes. <laughs> it was so bad. But I didn't care because I hated the school I went to. Really? Where did you go? Um, So my last two years, I went to Bernstein. It's okay. in Hollywood. Okay. Like it, it wasn't even my home school. None of, I had no friends there. It was horrible. So I did not care about that school. So you still took like the, the public transport, yeah, transportation? Yeah. I had to that? take like the 204, like the 754, the metro bus, yeah. and then the train to get home yeah girl and i would take i think that i think it was like yeah i think one of my buses was like the dash to, uh -huh. to get to downtown yes. uh-huh for the warehouse for the fashion was warehouse that's crazy yeah literally like something out of like your passion like literally brought you here today I know, like your crazy. whole life right oh my god you're so inspiring i love uh -huh, it thank it's you. like so cute like like you you rarely I don't want to say rarely because now it's becoming a thing, like hearing more stories, people that come out of poverty and like the single moms. And I don't yeah. know, I just feel like your guys' life can literally be a movie. Like you I can know. make a movie Everyone out of your life. Everyone tells us that like a whole less documentary, but it's, it's like insane. a whole LA life. Like mm -hmm. it, I could picture it like a little Elsie going on the bus <laughs> all the way to literally. Encino to go to school in elementary and like mm -hmm. ditching school to go to Fashion it's Nova. To like, <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. And my mom had no idea. We were, you I didn't don't, tell I don't her? even think my mom knew I had a job. You're lying. I swear. Why didn't you tell her? I don't know. I just feel like we were like we were not forced but in a way we were kind of like we had to grow up like without realizing that we had to grow of up course. at a young age of course. so we were like i don't know we'll just do our own thing i don't know it was so weird did you ever think she was gonna be mad about it though no i just feel like all of us we tried our best to not get her more like stressed out more worried that sounds so bad because we would literally be at night on the train she had no idea <laughs> she's like i don't want to stress out my mom but i want to yeah, sneak out like my mom has a, like yeah to this day she has no idea like a lot a lot of the yeah. shit that happened to uh, us yeah <laughs> she's like if she's watching just <laughs> never mind i know i'm like sorry mom <laughs> um wow so like you kept it now you kept so you kept fashion over from her yeah i think that she just your sisters know yeah yeah okay yeah i just feel like she i feel like we barely saw her so it was like it wasn't like necessary yeah I mean, like she'll be like oh how was school and we'll be like oh, it was good and then we'll just go on with her like you're like mm, i also got a job the yeah, other day i know <laughs> like, oh my gosh so and you kind of i would like to say like you kind of started like fashion industry like influencing because not everybody because there's the, like the og you know makeup ones but i right. feel like you set that pathway for like fashion and i like i don't think people realize that you've loved it since you were a kid because yeah. some some people some influencers just do it just just do it to just do it right you know what i mean like for the paycheck but you did it because you loved it you and your mm -hmm. sisters like you know wanted to do something because your mom needed the help right also right after that was it like everything started coming in and people mm -hmm. like did you could did you believe like wow this is actually happening to us yeah i feel like we were we were just so surprised at how people actually really liked what we were doing because right. we were just like this is fun for us like this is what we like to do so the more that we saw they got like attention the more we were like oh this is like i guess we can make something out of it and yeah i feel like the more old tree grew the more that um that's when i started getting on my personal since i would hide my face people had no idea who i was 
Um, you I started have such a beautiful face. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I know. I don't know if I would hide myself. I I don't know. Maybe because obviously, like our intentions weren't to right. create an influencer, right? So we were just like I don't Inspo, know, no. outfits mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Especially because I feel like me and my sisters were all so shy, you like can. super. So my intentions were to never ever like show anyone who I was. Like I to this day, I'm so so like I'm so so surprised that I'm on social media because I'm like I feel like I'm a very shy person. But then you started vlogging. Yeah, okay. I yeah I started vlogging with Alondra first. Right. So that's when we the iconic duo. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the girls. Yeah. So how did that start? What did like who's how did you guys meet or what did what happened? There? So we met um through Instagram. Okay. I, I remember we only had like 10k followers. Like yeah, and then I was Elsie Tristo when I first uh-huh. met her. So she had no idea what I even looked like when I first met her. Um, I had introduced her. No, I'm sorry. I had DM'd her asking her if she wanted to come with to an event. It was like um, one of our friends. She was launching like some lipsticks or something. Uh-huh. And then Alondra's also very shy. So when I first yeah. met her, like she she was so surprised that she even came. And I was just like, I'm the same way. Like, I'm so surprised I invited you because like Aww. I don't ever go out to events. Right. Like it was like one of my first events and i was just like, i don't know who to go with because i don't talk to no one on mm-hmm. social media like i don't it was just weird but she uh, she ended up saying yes and the rest is literally history because we ended Aww. up moving in together within two months of knowing no each other. way yeah. what if you didn't like her like what if like <laughs> she didn't wash the dishes or something like it's just so weird i feel like you felt instantly connected yeah like i don't know i feel like it's and it's hard to find that it I, is especially in LA there's so many people and it's like to find a genuine connection and then obviously like Mm -hmm. your business and then social media plays in a factor and right that stuff um so you guys kicked it off Mm -hmm. besties yeah so now I yeah and I feel like a lot had to do with us relating I feel like her story is very similar to mine really so like it's we related so much and like in everything in our lives and where we were with social media like we weren't even like working on our social medias or anything um and then we just started um like we would just film videos just to film them like our youtube channel started literally as a hobby as well wow. like we wouldn't even monetize our videos and like nothing we would just do it for fun like just for the laughs and that became something with that was realizing as well so were you because I, I know like hispanic moms and stuff like you can't leave the house until you get married right oh, did your right. mom ever have that problem because you weren't well obviously she wasn't your partner or whatever but right. you moved out mm-hmm. was it scary it was but i think um so before i was actually dating a guy before i met alondra and i was already gonna move in with him Ooh. and my mom was okay with it yeah. oh okay yeah That's so good. she was just like, like just go <laughs> and, but yeah it was just so weird because we ended up literally breaking up like right before i met her and then i ended up moving with alondra it's like god saved you no literally it did because what <laughs> he did he did because <laughs> i don't know how that would have went and that plus i would have never met alondra so oh where did yeah. you guys live we lived in paramount okay yeah. yes uh-huh. only for like a couple months i we ended up um breaking our release and then we moved to west covina because of why we had roaches <laughs> <laughs> i'm dead ass I'm sure about but, like, yes yeah. the uh, uh, the apartment was infested with roaches what yeah and we were just like no thanks did you have to pay because you know when you like we when did. you break what yeah we were so mad i remember we we left on bad terms with that apartment building because we didn't on the contract it didn't say that the apartment was roach infested <laughs> so we're like what, <laughs> what is this like, like side note there's roaches though. like i grew up with roaches but i'm like i'm trying to get out of the roaches no, you know I like know. oh my yeah God. that was the main reason why we left <laughs> <laughs> I know. now you guys know what apartment building so that everybody knows i think it was ah mixed wasn't it um the enclave <laughs> why on um, paramount Wait, is it off of it's like right off of a freeway i forgot i think yes, it's the, that's the 710 yes the long beach freeway i know which i'm like don't move there about. No, i'm kidding i'm just trying to think of the the exit ah uh, yeah i forgot it's like right next to a popeyes or something yes yeah and there's like a long bridge when you get off the exit, there's the yes. bridge. Yes, 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 yes. I know yes. which one you're talking about. Yeah, that's where we live. Guys, don't go there. I'm like, don't go don't there. there. Unless, unless they're like changed now. Is... Unless they're changed now. Because how long that's ago true. was that? Um, we were 21. So like five so years like five ago. Years like ago. Five, yeah. You guys have barely known each other for five years? 
Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that's true. Five years. It feels like when you see it, like, outside, it looks like 10. It feels like 10, yeah. I love that. All right, we're going to go on a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about more personal things and just all the good things about (laughs) Elsie. So we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. We have the beautiful Elsie here. So, obviously... Growing up in South Central, you worked with Fashion Nova, started OOTD Fash. I didn't ask, well, what did your mom think of like all this new business stuff? And obviously after vlogging and all that, like, did she ever realize how popping you were getting? Yeah, I think she started realizing when people would ask for pictures in public. Really? She would be so confused. She'd be she's like, like, why are they asking right. you? Right. She's well, like, what, what's going on? She's like, oh, like, yeah, because we were raised obviously in property. So she was just like what is going on here but no she was really happy for us i think that she um yeah she was just my, i feel like my mom's she's one of those hispanic parents there's like where she's just very very awkward to tell us how mm-hmm. she feels right um but she shows us with like her actions like she would always come out and try to help us with anything that we need to help with and yeah like I, I think she was very happy did your mom like was she one of those moms that never said i love you yeah to this day she's so like that yeah she's so like awkward and shy like that but did we we tell her and then she gets like uh, well like like, she'll tell us through text uh, (laughs) ah okay when it's in person or whatever in person yeah that's so cute though like i know like for some people like it's like it affect did it ever affect you that she never told you i love you no or you just you knew that she loved you yeah i feel like we we gave my mom like a break like when we, when it came to to everything because we i feel like we understand where she's coming from like yeah i yeah. know yeah we always we never saw her different because of it did any of your siblings ever give her like a hard time because you said that you oh, didn't yeah. like yeah mm-hmm. like and get because you said you never wanted to stress her out or mm-hmm. whatever which which person what sibling the two oldest betty and patty really and they gave her my hell? mom hell oh headaches all the time <laughs> you're like no you guys no mm-hmm. that's where the peacemaker in you comes out yeah because you're like no mom like my sisters would avoid fight each other when we were younger what? like physically fight <laughs> like, and i would i would always be in the middle trying to stop it it was bad <laughs> like, guys stop yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute though um wow and you just went popping like crazy like yeah. you just like obviously after alondra and like you had created this name. Did anything ever scare you though? Like, um, because it started like followers and like pictures and all that stuff. Like any moment and t- like up until now, like you're like, okay, this is getting a little not out of hand, mm-hmm. but I want to keep certain things to myself. Um, I think when I first started, no, I was just because I know like, no, I think I was just going with the flow. I think the way i started i was just having so much fun Mm -hmm. i wasn't even worried about like the negativity like i was just having so much fun throughout like all these years that i was doing social media that i never like actually i think now it's different because i have a baby so now i'm like "Mm, okay like you know like certain things i'm like "Mm, i do keep away from social media can we talk about little baby Ella? oh yes of course i, I wish i brought her i know i'm like i put her right here yeah. I'm like, what do she'd, you think she'd actually love it yes she, yeah i think okay she would love next it. time we're gonna do <laughs> it's just gonna be you and her one. yes <laughs> I'll, I'll, like, be sitting so here. tell me <laughs> what do you think about baby shark <laughs> no um okay so how did you like obviously you did you plan her did you not mm-hmm. plan her how did you meet baby daddy she was actually planned a lot of people don't know this but yeah she was planned and i met her dad through um alondra's ex okay so they're cousins okay yeah okay i'm trying to pick p- p- pictures in my head uh-huh. yeah so they're co- like blood cousins and that's how i met him so i've been i've been knowing him for years we just never really spoke because i never really was around him um up until like yeah i want to say when i when i first actually started being around him i don't even know what year what that was and everything just went by quick like we got together quick i think within like two three months like alani happened yeah but you knew like you yeah. knew you wanted to have a baby yeah we both did yeah, yeah. it wasn't like oh my god what a shock i'm pregnant you weren't scared though because you're know what i was i thinking. mean you're pretty I'm like, young no, i'm like damn 
Mm-hmm. Right? I know, yeah. I don't I just don't I can't imagine my life right now pregnant with a baby. Yeah. So like I mean everybody's different obviously, mm-hmm. but like were you ever scared like because of like obviously social media mm-hmm. and like your life and you had just like I would I guess like getting started like mm-hmm. did you ever like people say like don't do that because don't get pregnant because it's gonna stop your life this right yeah i feel like i honestly i did not put much thought into it i think i was just so like in my feelings and versus like me thinking with my actual head i think i actually started realizing like what i got myself into like during my pregnancy mm-hmm. that's when i was just like oh my god this is actually like real life right now like I've always said I didn't want kids. I've always said that I wanted to be like the fun tia because I'm really close that's with my... That's literally me. Yeah. Yeah, that's literally me. Okay, uh-huh. I'm like really <laughs> close with my nieces, my, uh-huh. my nephews. Like when my sisters do something, they leave me all the kids. I'm yes. just like that tia for all of my, my nephews and my nieces. Um, And then, yeah, I just... Well, yeah, when I got... When I was pregnant, I was just like, oh my God, what the heck did I do? Like, right. You're like, did I really want to or whatever? Yeah. And now, obviously, she's like, she's like your biggest blessing. She is. I feel like I, God gave me her for a reason. Yeah. I feel like I, I don't know, the more that I, because I spend a lot of time by me, a lot of time by myself, like a lot. And I, I don't know, I feel like I always reflect on my life and I'm always just like, damn, like I can't believe I went through this. I, you know, and I always, always try to like make myself feel better. And also, I don't know, just, stay very positive and talk to myself very po- like mm. positive and i truly feel like i got her for a reason like i feel like i deserved her like mm. i yeah I, I just i yeah i can't put you my life without her Aww. even after everything i'm like i i know i had it for a reason like i'm so happy how things went i love that yeah she's like a little lifesaver for you she really is and i i had no idea until now mm-hmm. um what did your mom think that you, when you got pregnant? Because that was three years ago. You were yeah. 24, I was 23, 23, sorry. 23, 23. <gasps> oh my God. What did your mom think? She was surprised because she was like, you have a boyfriend? <laughs> she was so surprised. She was like, what the heck? Um, so obviously she has met him before, but um, I think she was just very shook because like he's Caucasian. Like it was just something out of my ordinary like right. i've never dated a white guy before like uh-huh. so she was just like what like what you know what's going on mm-hmm. but um and also because i was like a party like a party girl like right. i loved going out so she would yeah she was very confused and like yeah she was just and like, then what's going on does she like is she the, you're the you're not the only one with the baby no all my sisters have kids who's who has the oldest is she different okay besides that who is is she different as a grandma Cause my mom was very different as a grandma. Like she, I was hard on her kids, mm-hmm. hard on her kids, but adored her grandchildren right. like to the ends of the earth. Yeah, is she, your mom the same way? She spoils her all her grandkids. Really? How many? How many does she have? Or oh, we have a lot. Okay, so it's uh, six. Oh, it's actually six. It's six cousins. No, oh, yeah, it's six of them. Six it's three kids girls, and six three cousins. boys. <gasps> yeah. Two three girls three wait is it three girls oh yeah yeah yeah. Lonnie, yeah. three girls three boys is alani the youngest she's the youngest oh wait no she's not she's the middle girl oh so her cousin yeah she has two cousins um under her how's her attitude like do is she more like you or is she like her dad i feel like i could see a little bit of both of us like i feel like she's very she's very independent extremely like if i if she wants something she's like no 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 i do i do it so i'm like okay but she could also be very shy like myself i feel like i'm so shy and i could see that in her um and she's her personality is everything i feel like she's so funny like she's she does she looks like a little but i feel like she's gonna be like one of those girls like in middle school that like like what the fuck do you say and like go off <laughs> on said. somebody i know my sisters always tell me like oh so you don't have to worry about her bully. i mean her getting bullied like she's gonna be the bully <laughs> i'm like no don't say that i need a teacher to not be a bully like, oh like yeah like, we're not she doing be that. like a boss ass like yeah she the, she could be confident she yeah, could be yeah, like yeah. a don't leader don't be mean to people but yeah don't be mean to be don't be out here bullying people <laughs> oh my gosh okay well obviously everybody you posted and you were pretty open about it like yep. your situation with your baby daddy did that did you ever like 
what made you feel comfortable enough to like share all of that stuff? Because I feel like it, it to a point it was just like, I don't know, I, at least for me, maybe because I'm very private as well. Like I, I don't have, I'm single right now, but even when I were to get a boyfriend, like I'm keeping it DL, like right. nobody knows. Like, mm -hmm. were you scared because of people's reactions of like everything that happened? And yeah, I feel like, and I, yeah, I think I made the mistake by even putting it out there. Mm -hmm. I think I was just thinking out of my emotions, out of like me being hurt. Cause now I'm like, I would never ever in my life do that ever again. Like I don't think I'll ever post any um, relationship problems on my social media. So I just think I reacted out of, out of my, just me being hurt and just me being angry you know I'm, yeah i'm just like i don't know why i would do that it was so cringy i'm like <laughs> you're like i just like, to this day, I'm like, why would i do that yeah oh my god yeah i don't know how i got so comfy to go on social media and talk about like right my relationship problems i don't get it but <laughs> do you feel like it's like one of like your biggest lessons like that you learned in oh 100 like, percent. yeah do you mean like in the relationship in general like since beginning to end like you wish you didn't post it or like just like i guess the more i think dramatic part. probably beginning to end because i am like i feel like i'm just like you i am super <laughs> private when it comes yes. to my love life like yes. i don't think anyone has ever like known when i'm actually dating someone mm -hmm. or when i'm talking to someone yeah i just feel like i don't know what it is i just i i don't know i get so awkward when people know that i'm talking to someone you know what it is I, at least for me it's just i don't need the opinions gotcha yeah you know what i mean like even from my friends like mm -hmm. i don't want you to, if i like this person i like him right like you don't necessarily have to like him let me figure it out mm -hmm. like let me get it together this person treats me right it's just uh, unnecessary opinions because i've always said it's like at the end of the day it's just you two dating yeah it's not true. like the whole world and mm -hmm. all that um I forgot what I was going to say. Hold on. <laughs> I had a brain fart. When obviously like now that, you know, the baby's here and like the whole everything happened, like were you, were you scared or like worried about how it would reflect to her? Like people saying things to her or like mm -hmm. as she gets older, because she hasn't gone to school yet, right? No. Like I would probably be like, that was always like my sister's concern too. Like when my mom passed away, people would Jayla the older one the her my mom's my sister's daughter like she had to move from Whittier to like Anaheim area mm -hmm. so that way people wouldn't recognize her that much really or make fun of her mm -hmm. or say or like you know so that way she can live a normal life mm -hmm. does that ever cross your mind about the whole situation and like mm -hmm. obviously being worried about you know then yeah. she ends up asking questions like what happened here or like yeah i feel like it does um i feel like i try my best to kind of like even like to this day like when i talked to her about her dad or something like i was just like oh daddy loves you like i always just try to keep it very just uh, somehow like i try to protect her and then when it comes to her being out in public or something or like me thinking about her going to school i just feel like i would have to be obviously very honest with her mm -hmm. like like this is what mommy did when she was younger like this and that but i would always want i would want to listen to her so say that like when she if she's like five and she's like mommy like i don't want to be on youtube anymore i would literally like just cut ties with her being on social media ever again i would just i would you know i would i would listen to her because i don't know how she feels right now obviously right like i know she loves the camera because she loves picking up my but like she loves picking up my camera and like vlogging stuff but i i don't know if she's gonna stop liking that when she's six yeah. seven or if she's gonna be like mommy like they're bullying me at school because they know who you are or something like that mm -hmm. I feel like I would have to somehow for sure like take her off of social media maybe like I don't know um I know that her dad's side of the family they want to put her in a private school mm. so I would hope that would help like it just it just depends like the older she gets then the more she can express her feelings to, like with me so I would yeah I would just have to listen with her and like listen to her and just see how what she likes what she doesn't like and yeah so she sees her dad like yeah so she gets visitations with him okay yeah supervised yeah okay mm -hmm. i get that 
Mm -hmm. I feel it, girl. I feel it. It's as long as you're comfortable and yeah, I, right. like how's the is it getting easier co-parenting though? I have no communications with him. Really? Like I actually a lot of people don't know this, but I actually have a restraining order against him. What? Yeah. So I have no communication with him. It's always through a th uh, third party. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's like a specific app too, right? Oh, talking parents. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a mediator, someone there. Yeah. And, and then like the like, court sees uh -huh, all of the conversations. Uh -huh. Yeah. I know about that. Um, That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> is it? But like, now that you went through all of that, mm -hmm. like, is it like a relief now? Like now that it's kind of basically over, and it's like you can move on and focus on the baby and yeah. your guys's future and her future most importantly. Right. Yeah. I think honestly, I feel like it kind of needed to happen for each party to get their shit together. Right. If that makes sense. Cause at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's not about him. It's about Lonnie. Right. And I feel like eventually, of course I would want my daughter to spend 50% of her time with her dad and 50 with me as much as I like, I would mm -hmm. be so devastated because obviously a mom wants to be with her kids 24 seven, but for my daughter eventually i would want her to be with her dad 50 percent of the time but i as of right now obviously it's not safe to do so so i just think that it was kind of bound to happen just before things got worse because right. they were getting there it was really bad um so i'm just i just hope that everyone every you know all parties take this as a lesson learned and then we just kind of move forward and just see Focus on where the yeah just focus on literally raising her and keeping her away from all the tox toxicness and all that i would be like so i don't know like as she gets older and like they start talking to mm -hmm. her more and like start metiendo cosas en la cabeza like mm -hmm. I, isn't that like wouldn't that be a concern too though it is because i'm super like i try to be very like honest with Alani, like sometimes when she's just like oh daddy's house today and i'm like no baby like we're gonna see him on saturday or, or sunday um i try my best to never even with my nephew because uh, my sister and my nephew they live with me right and recently i don't know if you saw but recently my nephew was on my live yes and he was I, just saw like, the, I saw the replays uh-huh yeah he was just like oh yeah lc's boyfriend is you know whatever right and then um everyone was just like oh that's fucked up like she's probably been dating him this whole time and it created this whole story uh, yeah i was just like no actually that's not true at all um but obviously because we keep the kids away from everything i don't think they need to know what's going on i feel like the, the issues keep we, their innocence exactly yeah i feel like the the issues we have they're fixable they're like we're gonna grow more mature as time goes like we're gonna be able to fix our problems without the kids ever knowing what we you know what happened mm -hmm. um so with alani like i don't know i would hope that nothing gets put in her head i just feel like i'm i would i'm the type of person that i'm like no baby like your daddy loves you and like to the, even at night like to this day like she counts who she loves and like she's like oh um and she always tells me oh my daddy or like my mama d which is her nanny or like my titi which is patty um, and I'm like, no, my daddy, like my, like we play around like that, but I always just make sure that she like loves her dad and I'm like cool with her, like with her dad in her little world. Like, it's just beautiful because you could be so bitter. Oh yeah. You but, could be mm -hmm. so bitter and angry, but because of her, like mm -hmm. you're choosing to have a soft heart about it. And even right. then <clears throat> having the grace to be able to allow visitations. Right. Because yeah. I think and you could say if i'm wrong or not but you didn't have a dad growing up yeah. right mm -hmm. and it's not something you want to take away or exactly. get away from milani yeah exactly like i would never put her in that position unless obviously if it's not like right now just isn't the time right i feel like when she's in safe conditions then so be it alani could be with her dad 50 percent of the time i feel like she deserves her dad when things are right and safe for her um do people know why it's not right yeah i feel like um because i don't want to say it unless like you're obviously not comfortable with it <laughs> no like, yeah, you're fine because i you know obviously it's like personal and it's like i feel like you've let it go but right no i will i think um some of our court documents have been put online because obviously it's, it's public information of course it's not something that i can't you know hide 
I can hide forever. And some people have gotten a hold of our court documents, but I don't think about the recent times. Um, I just feel like when there is, I'm like, how do I say this without, you know, I'm, I don't want to make things worse than what they are. Mm-hmm. Um, but law enforcement was involved a lot. Okay. Like a verbal abuse, like all, mm-hmm. all of that. And there was a point where Al- Alani's safety was really, it was very concerning, like, um, to the point where even the judge felt like it wasn't safe for Alani. For Alani. Like, there was text messages, voice recordings, like, mm. things like that, that Alani was mentioned where it just sounded like she Alani. wasn't going to be safe. Yeah. So you had to do it for your... So I think that's what kind of, like, yeah, I just made the judge, like, no, like, Alani can't be, you know, she can't be around there right now. So it was mainly... Yeah, I just, yeah, there was a lot that it was out of my control, even though I I tried my best to, like, you know, cooperate, but, uh, yeah, and, yeah, and save the co-parenting relationship, but it just, it wasn't, like, so when people are not in their, like, sober state of mind, mm-hmm. it doesn't work out. Well, you're a good mommy. Oh, I'm not a so mom, much. but I do see, like, your hard work and everything that you do for Alani and even your family, like your story and where you came from and you still, you could be such a different person and bitter right. and, <clears throat> but you could, you literally are an example of coming out of poverty, having a kid and having all this bullshit happen and turn into something beautiful. Mm-hmm. Literally like what's the, is a, con- a rose, a rose grew out of the concrete right (laughs) anyways that's you and i wanted i'm not i don't have kids but if i would have if i was alani i would have wanted that too for my safety right you know and i know that when she gets older she's gonna you know appreciate it Mm -hmm. and just know that you did the best for her um now after you when you found out that you're pregnant and all that did you push you more to like for social media and work harder yeah, I think that's when I was just like, okay, like, oh, stop fucking around. Okay. <laughs> just like, this is not a joke anymore. Yeah, I'm like, damn, I have to actually work now. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not fun and game. Uh, right. It's, it's not a hobby anymore. I actually have to work. <laughs> I have to clock in now. Um, but no, yeah, I think so. Yeah, because obviously before, like, I would go out a lot. Like, we would have little parties at our apartment. Like, we was we were like, we were still doing social media, but I feel like we'd could have obviously if we weren't like drinking all, all the time we weren't having little parties we weren't if we weren't going out we could have obviously worked a lot more on our social medias but i think after alani i was yeah i was just like okay like let's get yeah, to work right. yeah. okay well we're gonna go on our last break and we're gonna just give the girlies some advice who are in the same situation or we're in the same situation as you, so we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. So, my question is, we'll do like a little advice for every little era or okay, time in your that. life, okay? okay? Growing up, let's go step by step. Okay. Growing up in poverty, your mom, all that, going to school on buses, what's advice that you can give to like the younger crowd in the same situations right now? I think, um, I want to say from like growing up, like where I grew up, I just think that just, I know it sounds so cliche, but I think just remaining yourself and just making sure that you are trying to like work on your dreams, but also in a very like humble way. I feel like, especially like where I came from, I see a lot of people who come out of there and it, I don't know, it changes them as a person, but not in a good way. Mm. And like I'm drugs like, oh, and all that stuff. Yeah. Too. So it's, it sucks. Cause even fr- um, friends that I went to high school with, like some of them are dead. Like some of them like got into drugs. Some of them are like, it's, right. it's bad. So I just feel like, just think of your parents. Like I know a lot of us, we have parents who came from a different country, whether, mm-hmm. whether it's Mexico, whether it's Salvador, wherever, you know, wherever, um, just think of your parents like our parents did not come all the way out here for nothing like yep. it was I on it like I thought that I had a worse growing up but when I hear my mom's story I'm like I literally went through nothing compared yeah. to you really? so I always just that's what I always think about I always just think of my mom so I was just I'm always just like 
I want to work. I want to just bust my ass and just work and try to repay my mom for everything that, you know, mm-hmm. that she did. So I my, my advice would probably just be like, I don't know, just do things that you love to do without hurting anyone in the process. Mm-hmm. And then just just do it genuinely. Just do it like with your heart and just just think of your parents. Like, that's all I have to say. Like, I don't yeah. know. I feel like your parents should be your main concern because I... I mean, when I when I was growing up, I had a lot of friends who would disrespect their parents, and I'm like, "Yeah, girl, what is you doing with this mm-hmm. for me?" Um, so I just feel like we have so many opportunities here in the U.S. Like right. we could do so much out here, and we have. I feel like it's so it's so underrated how lucky we are to be out here. Yeah, extremely. I agree. Like it, even I don't know. Like um, it's expensive. Oh yeah, out sure. here, but it's like everything's given to you here it is and i yes. sadly a lot of people have to like in other countries don't have that the ava- that availability mm-hmm. that the the resources and yeah there's you know it is it's literally a blessing like they they don't like our people mm-hmm. out here and it, it's sad because like a lot of people like work that are hispanic salvadorians mexicans anywhere mm-hmm. like they literally provide everything for us as well right like, the fruits and like the grocery stores and restaurants mm-hmm. and it's just like it's just a blessing yeah to be able to be here and i completely agree with you like it's just you got to appreciate what you have even like your mom and your parents right. and it's not like something to take for granted no definitely and it you know you guys can come out just like how elsie did like in the most beautiful way what about social media fashion Mm -hmm. ootd like from all that experience people that have the same passion to like launch a boutique or instagram or youtube like what is your main advice that you can give I think my main advice would be literally just like do it because I know a lot of people they get very discouraged because they're like well here here comes another boutique here comes another this but I honestly and I tell everyone this like there's literally like sun for everyone there's money for everyone Mm -hmm. there's like we can share anything like if I don't think that if you say that you want to open up like a candle shop and then you're like oh but like five people already have that and it's like okay well why can you be the six i yeah. i don't get it i yeah, i honestly at the table mm-hmm. yeah i honestly feel like there's no excuses for anything i feel like and i know it's hard but i'm not saying that because it, it's extremely hard especially financially like yep. physically to start a business but i'm saying like i think if you build the courage to do so i don't see why you can't do it like there's yeah. literally no like no excuses for it like I've grown up, I've always wanted to be like in the medical field. Mm-hmm. And then even to this day, I'm just like, if I ever decide to quit social media, I don't see why I can't go back and yeah. do what I want to do. It's you never know? too late. Yeah. So I'm always just like, I know there's hope for everything. And even if you want to be an influencer, mm-hmm. we'll, just do it. We'll gladly welcome you with open arms. <laughs> like there's room for everyone here on, on these platforms. Like yep. these platforms are not going to go anywhere. Like if you want to make an extra living or if you actually love being on social media, if you feel like you, people can relate to you, your story with the way you are, like share it. Like I don't see why you can't, you get me? I think even having a passion for it because you, right. you did your whole lookbooks and all the layouts with passion right right like, l- a little girl loving clothes like mm-hmm. just like hey you guys this is where you could wear like it's literally meaning it with your heart and i think it, it just it flourishes from there yes like and it'll if, when you do things out of your heart and with yes. good intentions as well right. and be a good human like right. be a yeah. good <laughs> human like don't be like stuck up or like you know rude to people like Mm because i I swear that's never gonna get anybody anywhere no it really isn't like i always tell everyone that like don't go on social media thinking you're like your head is up your asshole yeah it's not gonna work like no one first of all no one can relate to that no no one wants to feel someone's cold energy like i just Mm -hmm. and i feel like you can feel it with people you can feel like their their aura like their energy and i feel like you are gonna succeed when you're doing it with best intentions and while like as you're doing it you're not hurting anyone on like you know on the way yep. there because it's like i don't know i feel like no one you burn bridges did what I'm you burn bridges yeah and, and like, then i don't know i just feel like it sucks like you don't you just don't want to do that you gotta have good um connections 
when you have good connections, like I just feel like you go farther. Yeah, no, really, you do. And what about business with family? Would you do it again? No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no, Patty, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I actually like, um, obviously I'm so part of OTD, but I kind of in a way stepped down like away from it um, just because I love social media. Like, I don't think I ever want to stop doing social media. I'm going to be 40 years old so doing social media. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> be fine as hell. Do it I'm yourself. dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I just feel like it's, it's hard. And I know some people have no other choice but right. to do it. Mm -hmm. I just feel like if there's communication, if there's honesty, if there's respect, like anything and everything can work out with family mm -hmm. business and i know it's so hard but if it's something that you guys really enjoy doing then the fighting the screaming that's just all a part of it it's not the end of the world like it's gonna happen yeah nothing's like, like no, yeah nothing is sunshine and rainbows especially with businesses even like if you're if you're in a business with no family right it's something's still gonna happen yeah so. i i don't know what's better though because Running a business with family is hard. I think it's just it setting is. those boundaries and like letting everybody know like this is this person's job, this person's job and not crossing those lines. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> it gets complicated. Think about it, guys. <laughs> pray about it. Please pray about right. it when you're opening a business with family. Right. Okay. And what about being a mom and co-parenting? I think that's a huge lesson. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it is. I think the first thing that I want to put out there, because I know a lot of, especially single moms or even moms that are married or like, mm -hmm. you know, are in a relationship. A lot of a lot of moms, we just tend to feel alone in this process. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what really breaks my heart, because I feel like I always get DMs and comments and of people saying like, oh, like, you know, my boyfriend's here, but he's not here. And a lot of people just feel alone. And I hate it because I'm like, no, like we are like us moms well everyone mm -hmm. in general but i feel like i see moms in a way different perspective like i have them like set up on a really high bar because i have so much respect for them i feel like no one knows what we actually go through right and if you are a single mom co-parenting i just feel like whatever is right for the kids for your babies i know that um like say that your partner or your ex-partner is trying to like ruin your life because i've heard a lot of stories where like where you know there could be better parents okay. unfortunately and it's like sometimes it is out of our control but i just feel like if you take the time to be by yourself actually get to know yourself and actually know what you want what you don't like you know you can set boundaries when it comes to all of that right and i don't know i just really hope that that no one feels alone like i know i know it feels so lonely especially like taking care of a baby by yourself and you're just like well i don't have anyone to go on like the mm -hmm. park to the park with or but i feel like you should the what i personally do i take advantage of every single because i'm alone a lot mm -hmm. like all of my family my friends they know how i spend a lot of time by myself like just me and nolani and yeah i feel like it does get extremely like it it gets depressing it gets like I don't know. It just feels like, 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 you know, like you're alone, mm -hmm. but I just take advantage of that time. And I'm like, okay, well, let me try to fall back in love with myself. Yeah. Let me see what I like about myself. Let me see what I don't like about myself. Let me see what friends are good for me. Like, let, let me see, like, oh, you know, let me see what I want for my daughter. Let me see what I don't want for her. And I feel like it has helped me a lot. I think we are so afraid of being alone extremely yeah. i don't know what it is but us being alone and i humans we're not meant to be alone mm -hmm. i think naturally like it's not in us mm -hmm. we can't be alone but sometimes we have no other option like sometimes we're left to be single moms without an option so i just think that as long as we are mentally and like spiritually and emotionally taking care of ourselves we can literally like give our friends our especially our kids our like the best of us right and i think that's the beauty of of just you know spending time by yourself that's the beauty of being a single mom like we i i feel like i wish i could like tell every single single mom out there whether you're single whether you're taken like you, i don't know where your kids would be without you mm. like you are doing an amazing job like don't ever forget that like it's i think it's just it's nice i feel like Cries. Uh -huh, I'm <laughs> tears no because no, yeah. it's true yeah i just i don't know I, I just feel so bad like i wish i could like have a little mom group of like 
all moms who like are going through it and like i don't know i feel like moms should you know have the most respect yeah i feel like especially single moms yeah i feel like they get not that they get it the hardest but it's just like when you're already in a relationship the baby already depends on you the most right and then it's like now that there's not that other person like you you have a lot of responsibility a lot right Mm -hmm. i'm not a mom but i just i've seen it with my mom and obviously with your with your story and then my sisters like it's just it's a lot of work and again i just i applaud you because Thank it's not an so easy much. job being a mom and especially at your age like you're so young and for you to make that decision to have a baby and it just it takes a lot of a lot of balls and you're doing right. it good you're doing Thank it you. good and i feel like you would be a really good mom i get that a lot like you give me that mommy book, <laughs> I which get is that good a lot. which no, is good i generally get that a lot and i like again i'm I relate to you. I'm like the favorite Thea mm-hmm. and I take care of the kids. I take them with me everywhere. Like whenever I can, I'll, I'll take them back to school shopping. I'll mm-hmm. take them to Disneyland and all that stuff. Like anything to help my sister and just to have that experience with them. But I don't know, girl, I just don't know. Like, I don't know if I would ever want to be a mom myself. Mm-hmm. Like I like giving them back. <laughs> I <laughs> like, said, right. I'm just like, here you go. That's the best part about I'll being see you guy. guys like in two weeks or whatever. <laughs> um but damn i really i really appreciate it because when i that you came because when i started the podcast i really wanted to get down and like deep and have vulnerable conversations Mm -hmm. and make people know your story and guess stories and where you come from because everyone has someone to relate to right and whether it's me or whether it's you or somebody out there like that way they don't feel alone right you're like you said about the single moms like you guys you're not alone like she's a single mom herself like she hasn't had it easy at all Mm -hmm. like in her life like she came literally from nothing and made something beautiful out of her life and her story and i just appreciate you coming here and sharing that with me and obviously with everybody listening and watching uh so what's next for you what's next for elsie what are plans or projects or anything that you want to share or I feel like there's a lot that I want to do and um, mainly I want to start like some sort of like help foundation for moms in general. Mm. Like just anyone who needs the help financially like for like back to school stuff, clothes, toys, diapers, wipes, whatever it is. I just feel like that I was destined to do that. I feel like which is so weird. I'm like, I don't know what it is, but I'm I can just. I have such a huge soft spot for moms, like just yeah. any moms in general, mm-hmm. even single dads. Cause I know, I know like sometimes there's single dads too. Yeah. yeah. Like there's sometimes moms, like there's moms that can be the greatest. Like it's, oh, yeah. So even dads, single dads as well, or single parents in general, like, or married couples, like whatever it is, you know, just good parents who are raising their kids and doing what's best for them. Um, I just want to focus on, you know, on starting something like that. On, be beautiful. Yeah, and just helping the kids. And I remember when ever since I was little, I would I would always talk about I want to open up like an adoption center where I can like. Girl, me too. Yeah, it's yeah. Dude, I would always talk about it, and even till this day, like I would. I always wanted to be a teacher. I always wanted to be a pediatrician. Look at <laughs> that's look so at funny. Us. I, yeah, I don't know why we never met before. No, before. <laughs> no, but I always wanted to be a teacher, or and to this day, like I. Want wanted to help in foster care yes like something yes. along those lines but mm-hmm. obviously like it's not easy because you know those the court and like their right. kids and all that <clears throat> stuff but oh my gosh that would be beautiful i yeah. think you should i think that like like that's what i mean also like when you do things with good intentions as well like helping other people like you'll get receive a blessing back whatever maybe like right. god will give it back to you in some way some form like whether that be in a collaboration or mm-hmm. something like a i don't know 
But I think that would be beautiful. Yeah, I think it's nice. We actually, um, every year, I'm putting it out there. So hopefully, since this December is coming up, every year during Christmas at Echo Park, I always post it on my social media. So if you guys follow me on social media, um, we actually help kids in foster cares. Um, we help them with like toys, um, backpacks, and stuff like that. Um, so just putting that out there. If you guys want to follow me, so you guys can see it during December during Christmas time, we always yes. go to Echo Park. There's like a foster care home there that um we go and we just have like this little event for the kids and we like we donate and we collect money for them like everything so it's oh my nice. god i would love to donate yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna be a part of that you guys make sure you guys follow her you guys mm -hmm. know so that way if you guys want to be a part of that she's gonna share it in december you said yeah right? it's always during christmas okay yeah, yeah i love that <laughs> oh, so cute can you share your socials so that way everybody can follow you and all oh that stuff? yes so tiktok twitter youtube IG, pretty much everything. It's Elsie Guevara. Guevara. Yeah. Yes. Little Salvi Queen. I love it. Well, thank you. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening from wherever you guys are at. We are 10 episodes in. Oh, congrats. So thank you. Oh my God, how cool. We have a lot to go, but 10 episodes is like. That's pretty good. Every 10. Yeah. <laughs> every 10, I'm like, I get excited. So anyways, but thank you guys so much again. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, leave a comment and a review. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Overcomfort Podcast is a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network.